Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, lift it up, fill it up. Fill up my pitcher, my pitcher, Lord, my big old, big old pitcher, Lord. Fill up my pitcher, my pitcher, Lord, that I may have enough to fill someone else's cup. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and fill this picture of my soul. Yeah, totally had to share that with you. My friend Angie earlier this week shared about needing to have our pictures full, not just our cup full. If we have our cup full and we pour it out, where do we get more from to refill it? If we have our pitcher full to overflowing, then we have enough for our cup and everybody else's. We can actually help hold other people's cup underneath the pitcher as it overflows and collect it and give it to them so that they can be refreshed and renewed and start again. You know, as a carer, my husband, with Parkinson's, I'm his full-time carer. And as a full-time carer, sometimes we forget that we need to fill our cup first. So having a pitcher full is a really good idea for anyone that's a personal carer for somebody who's going through an illness. Or if you yourself are going through something and you need extra time for rest and restoration so important. It is in those times of being refreshed by the Spirit that we find the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Sometimes we're going through things and we're so depressed that we can't find any joy. I did that for five years. Five years of serious depression. Could not even get out of my own way. I'm so grateful that I survived those years. Some people don't. And for the families who are dealing with the loss of a loved one, I pray a special grace upon them and peace beyond all understanding because there is no understanding when someone takes their own life. We don't understand and we feel there should have been something we could have done, but sometimes there just isn't. And you've done what you can do, which is to love them to the best of your ability. That is all we can, any of us do. And sometimes the best of our ability is sadly lacking in the eyes of the other person. My children went through times during that five years where they truly felt abandoned by me. And in reality, they were. I abandoned myself, let alone my children. But I didn't stay there. I figured out what was causing me to be there. I looked into it. I took the time to go to counselors. I took the time to spend in prayer. I took the time calling out to God and saying, please tell me why I'm so upset. I didn't even know why I was devastated. It was something that had happened 14 years earlier that was a traumatic experience that I had shut down my emotions and here I was 14 years later going into severe depression. And I had been living for 14 years, kind of ignoring that that was even there. So you don't know somebody else's story. You don't know why they're sitting there in depression. You don't know what abandonment they felt. And I want to encourage you that if you're with someone and they're feeling that, don't discount it. Let them know that you value them. And that you see that right now it's hard. Yes, it will be okay.
for all things work together for good for those who are called according to God and according to his purposes. So if you're one who's called according to God and his purposes and those who I'm speaking to on this channel, this is promise sounds, the promise sounds of heaven. You are called according to his glory and you will be okay. But is it okay in this moment? You can say no. No, it's not okay. I can't stop crying. That's not okay. That hurts. It is painful. You have a choice, however, to decide if you're going to stay in that or if you're going to let it go. And I know that sounds like ridiculous and that you don't have a choice and that you just, this is how I feel and I don't have any choice of how I feel. But as one who has lived through it and went through five years of severe depression, came out on the other side, it was a day that I made a choice to no longer wake up every morning and cry all day. I just said, I'm done with it. I'm simply done with it. And that sounds almost trite when I say it now, but it's not. It's a reality and it's available for you and you have the power to choose. And I want to encourage you if you're listening to this right now and you're feeling like you are falling apart and you can't keep going, you have more power within you than you realize. Your mind is a place where it can create whatever you can imagine. And that was part of the problem that I had. I was in such depression, I couldn't imagine anything but being depressed. So I had to start reading things that were encouraging, talking to people that were encouraging, going and having other people pray for me, pray with me. I didn't even have the strength to pray sometimes. And sometimes I get so tired now I'm like that because I'm taking care of my husband, I'm taking care of myself, and I lose track of rest. I'm about to go rest very, very shortly. But before I went to rest, I definitely wanted to come in here and say hello to you and say thank you for being a part of the community. Thank you for being a part of my life. I pray that your picture is being lifted up to God tonight and that you are allowing him to fill it with his love and with his peace. It is there for you. This is Cindy Lou with Be Bold You and Promise Sounds. Promise Sounds of Heaven coming to you, letting you know that you are not alone, that God is with you, that I'm here and I'm praying for you. If you're listening right now, I am praying for you. That you will know the love of God that is so deep, it's beyond comprehension. And that you will know the peace of God that is so encompassing and covers you in such a way that you will know that it surpasses your understanding, yet it is comforting to you. May God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Till next time.